Good morning, everyone. I am the pro-rector of the University of Oslo, and I'm extremely happy to welcome all of you to the University of Oslo and this conference, Transformation in a Changing Climate. The conference is co-organized by the University of Oslo, CICERU, the Stockholm Resilience Center, and ISSC. It is likely to be the first in a series of conferences addressing this theme to take place around the world. This room now occupies approximately 250 people. You represent almost 50 countries. In other words, the perfect picture of how the conference on climate change should be met with dialogue and discussion across national borders or regional organizations and across academic divides. Universities are obvious participants and facilitators for dialogue concerning the grand challenges of our time. It is, in fact, an important part of our social responsibility, and the University of Oslo is certainly no exception. Meeting the challenge of a changing climate and all its implications is a multifaceted task. We need to be innovative in our approach, and we need to think beautifully and act dutifully, as the Norwegian eco-philosopher Arne Ness said. In 2013, it is also the University of Oslo's year of innovation. And innovation will be a key theme today. Hopefully, an innovation that consists of an ethical reflection, what I would like to call ethical innovation. We want to raise the awareness to the role universities have in driving innovation forward. Without innovative solutions, we will not be successful in meeting the future and changing climate. To reach an understanding of what transformation in a global area actually implies, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research collaborations are critical. Therefore, I'm happy to see representatives of many disciplines in this room. The social sciences and humanities are disciplines with enormous contributions to make towards understanding change processes, including how we can deliberately change in a fair and ethical manner and joyful manner. The role of arts is also emphasized in this conference. Art is not just a source of entertainment or means of communication, but also a way to visualize and experience transformation processes in new ways. And some days ago, I had the opportunity to engage in a public dialogue with the world-known writer and philosopher Justin Gordidir to talk about his last book, Amma, a modern fairy tale about climate change, which I will recommend to you all, Amma. While we are participants in a public dialogue, universities also need to put their money where their mouth is. At the University of Oslo, we have our Green UIO initiative, which together with the organizer at the Institute of Sociology and Human Geography has made this conference as green as possible. And I wish to thank both the organizers and Green UIO for a job well done. I'm certain you will have motivating, challenging and inspiring days here in Oslo. The conference is driven mainly by dialogue and discussion and less by presentation, something which is not less demanding. Real dialogue is about listening carefully and being willing to meet other people's argument even if you do not sympathize with them in the first place. A dialogue wide enough for the uncomfortable dilemmas. Arne Ness once told me, if you ask me what kind of philosophical attitude I was inspired by, I immediately think about Diogenes, who dressed in a barrel and walked around with a lantern in the middle of the day, searching for wise people. Diogenes, said Arne, was a role model for me and made me aware of my own life and that prioritizing values was the inner core of mankind. In other words, we need to think far ahead, dealing with our global challenges, 
If we have a long-term vision, for example, two or three generations ahead, our work could be about what kind of world we leave behind. What kind of world do our grandchildren or our great-grandchildren receive from us? Here, to shed light on today's topic, from the view of the Norwegian authorities, is our Minister of the Environment, Bård Vegar Solhjell, and I'm so happy and pleased and honored that you could be with us here today. So good luck with the conference. I hope you have awarding discussions, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and, uh, and uh, first let me say it's a great pleasure to be uh, back at the university in Oslo, which is my university, it's where I have my degree from. Uh, from time to time I'm invited to speak to, uh, mostly to students, and I always tell the students, uh, which is true, that when I look at them, they, I think students look younger every time I come back to the university. And, and it kind of strikes me now that even researchers look younger than... <laughs> than they did in my time at the university. Um, I, I come from um, a small community on the west coast of Norway, surrounded by deep fjords, by steep mountains, and magnificent glaciers. We are used to rough weather, but increasingly people in my region fear that changing weather is also putting them at greater risk. The features of landscape are also changing rapidly. While the glaciers were hanging majestic and blue only a decade ago, what is left is a gray rock. So what do these changes do with people in this region? The perce their perception, identity, and sense of place. Natural sciences is fundamental to understanding climate change, but climate change must be able to capture also the processes of change that go beyond nature and into the understanding of how society and people conceive, react and respond to climate change. And I should add, I'm trying, trained as a political scientist myself, that I all, all, often in my daily work also as a minister feel a lack of this broader approach uh, in the research. I welcome this conference that speaks directly to this issue and hope it will be a valuable contribution in building comprehensive understanding of climate change processes. The climate change challenge gives shapes to new ideas and policies on almost any field, uh, from transport, healthcare, energy, um, to the visual arts and literature. However, regretfully too slow, because the lack of ability, of our lack of ability to fully grasp and welcome change and to understand that it is actually coming. In 1958, NGU, which is the Norwegian Geological Survey Institute, declared in a formal letter to our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and I quote, the possibility to find oil, coal, or sulfur on the continental shelf offshore Norway should be neglected. 11 years later, in 1969, Norway stepped into the oil age with the ocean Viking rig striking oil at Ekofisk. The story of oil in Norway believes, uh, proves that belief in changing the future is not naive. Change happens. But when people try to predict the future, they tend to rely on experience the truths of today, often ignoring in the most obvious fact when we look behind, uh, in back in hindsight. Celebrating 100 years of the right for women to vote in Norway earlier this month, today's place for women in society is taken for granted for many uh, re obvious reasons. But when people looked forward into the future in 1913, they would never even guess of much of what dominates the life of modern humans, it be mobile phone, commercial air flight, or women's right to decide their own destiny. In the 1850s, uh, uh, a British artist made a famous 
cartoon or a drawing of, a, of his future scenario of London. This is in the 1850s in the, in the uh, ho where horse taxis dominated the streets of London. When he was to draw transportation, he drew a horse carriage or a horse carriage with a hundred horses before it. <laughs> because his natural way of thinking or change was much more of the same. It was not it was possible for him to imagine cars or a qualitative change. Our lack of ability to imagine new technologies, ideas, forms of organizations is uh, hindering our ability to actually also change human conditions. More than 80% of the greenhouse gases that can be allowed to re be released into the atmosphere under the 450, so-called 450 scenario have already been released. Annual emissions of all greenhouse gases combined compares to roughly 15 billion tons of CO2, according to UNEP. Last week, the International Energy uh, uh, Organization presented another report stating that we are on course for four to five degrees global warming. This will create living conditions unknown to mankind. The good news is that global warming was created by man and therefore can be solved by humans. It is a problem that was created by mankind and man it is in the ability of mankind to do something about it. I grew up under the threat of the nuclear war between the US and the Soviet Union. My children grew up under the threat of global warning. As it turned out, there was no nuclear war. The Iron Curtain is history and the Soviet Union no does no longer exist. Anyway, Miss are now allied. If someone told us in 1979 that the Berlin Wall would be gone in 10 years, we would not have believed it. Even if Norway is a small country, we can take our fair share uh, of what has to be done. We have pledged to cut emissions 30% compared to the level of domestic emissions in 1990. Continued, uh, conditioned by a sufficiently ambitious global agreement, this target will be stepped up. We aim to be a low carbon society mid-century and we will stay committed to several international initiatives on clean energy, carbon capture technologies, fighting deforestation and addressing the short-lived climate forces. Halting climate change and achieving a green transition is the greatest challenge of our time. But it is doable. The ocean shield was threatened, so through international ne negotiations and local action, we fixed the problem. And I have not met with one person that complains and wants to have back the refrigerators and spray cans of yesterday. Low emission society is not a boring and hard and difficult society, as many tend to believe. It is, on the contrary, a better society in many ways. There will be more cars with no emissions and less noise. We will plan our cities better with shorter distance between our houses, our working places, schools and kindergartens. Uh, and our, uh, our industry will be more sustainable with safer, uh, safer, uh, uh, play, a safer place to work for the employees. In a truly resilient, resilient economy based on sustainable technologies and solutions. Maybe our children will shake their heads when we tell them about the cities of our childhood, the pollution, the noise and traffic jams. Let me end where I started, back home. My hope for this conference is that it widens our understanding of a changing climate and that collectively researchers from different disciplines contribute to build a shared understanding of climate change and transformative processes. At the same time, help us to understand how we face the consequences of an already changing climate. I wish you all uh, the best for the days to come and hope that the organizers and all the, you who are participating will uh, have an enriching experience here at the conference. Thank you.